When we have children, we are so blessed that both our, both our moms are good, godly women. And I know I'm from Kentucky, but we have different moms. <laughs> when he said, or give what you can, or give, take what you need, give what you can, went to first cousins, I just thought, hey, my wife's been coming. Anyway. <laughs> We were so lucky because anytime you're a young married couple and you have children, you are so dumb. It's just, it just comes. You have kids, you don't know what to do, you run around, and every, everything with your first child is like a major catastrophe. But we are so fortunate that my mom is a godly woman and my wife's mom is a godly woman. And because they had shown us how godly women live, my mom and Carrie's mom are able to insert their advice and training into my wife's life. We have God's good neighbors. And Vicki Temple has become my kid's grandma while they're away from while they're away from grandma and grandpa. And this passage fits. They can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home. Vicky's able to speak into my wife's life because Vicky has shown what it looks like to know Christ. She's able to show what it looks like to be a godly wife. She's able to teach what it looks like because that, that word in there, submission, there's a lot of people that don't like to hear that word, but there is a biblical way for wives to submit to their husband and that's what it teaches. But there's a right way, and there's a, a lot of false truth out there. That's why this is so important to have women who have been there and done that, and who have lived through life, to be able to offer, I know what's going on, and I know how Christ interacts. Determined. Determination. That's what faith teaches us. And that's how older men and older women are supposed to act in those situations. And then the faith teaches the younger men. I say you younger men, but I have to include myself. Discipline. Discipline. When you hear these words, that's kind of, kind of maybe not in our, in our vocabulary, it's not something we're talking about, but that word self-control, that, that discipline is so important. Younger men, our job is to protect the reputation of these believers. Our, our, our strength and our youth are is able to go out. It's able to tell. It's able to go build. It's able to go help. But if we do that in such a way where we're not self-controlled in the things we say, or we fly off the handle because we just lose our temper, all of a sudden we're hurting the reputation of all of this family. We hurt the reputation of the, all the churches in Wilmington. Because it's showing people that Christ doesn't make a difference. Because look at that guy. And look at how he hasn't changed one bit since he says he knows Jesus. Listen to what Paul says to Titus. In the same way, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech. That cannot be condemned. So that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. It's protecting the reputation of the body of believers. I was in KFC this past week. I had my daughter with me, my wife was with me, and these these guys came in, and I don't know if they were Christians or not, I, I don't I don't know, but they came in and they were saying such filthy things that I wanted to cover my daughter's ears. If they have been Christians, then it's my responsibility as a brother in Christ to say, hey, you need to watch what you're saying. If they're not Christians, then I just have to live a self-controlled life to show them how they're supposed to live. But if they were Christians, they taught my daughter some words she didn't even know. And they're going to ruin the reputation of the church. And I'm not sure where the cutoff is. But when Titus is told to teach them self-control, his main thing is what they say. And 
we young guys, we can say some pretty stupid things. I know. And I do it daily. Paul says we can grow to say correct things. We can grow to be an example. And we can grow in such a way that we can protect our family. This is our family. And finally, he talks to slaves. Now this is not the slavery we know that was practiced here for 200 years in the United States. This is a different kind of slavery. This is this fits more like an indentured servant. They were still slaves. They were still under their master's rule. But they were able to buy freedom. They were able to work their way out of it. A lot of times they were captured because of war. But it was, it was a different kind of slavery. And it fits more with us with workers under bosses. And if we're going to make a connection with this passage, we've got to think, how do we go about being a Christian? Being good because of what Christ had done for us. Well, what does that look like when we go to work? Teach slaves. And isn't that what we are when we have to go to work? Do we teach slaves to say, down with the man? No. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters and everything. To so try to please them. Would it be weird if you tried to please your boss? Not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted. This is talking about dependability. Faith teaches dependability. If you've got something in your job that needs to be done, does your boss know that if he gives it to you, it will be taken care of? And you're trustworthy with whatever's handed to you? What's going on here with these slaves is, all of a sudden they have freedom in Christ, and that can immediately lead to them saying, I want freedom from my situation. And a lot of times Christ says, you're free from sin, but you're stuck in your situation and you've got to endure. And you've got to endure faithfully. And that's what it's talking about to these workers. Not to steal, but to show that they can be fully trusted. So that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. You get to protect the reputation of Christ by if you're dependable or not in the work. If you're trustworthy. If you're dependable, then all of a sudden, what's going on with those slaves in that day and age is they said, I have found Christ. He has made a change in my life. And then if they go back to being a slave and they're worse than when they encountered Christ, nobody's going to want to know who Jesus is. But if they say, I have been made free from my sin. I've now gotten a chance to know God. There's a change in my life. And they go back to work and they're better workers. Somebody's going to say, I want to know why there's a difference there. I started with verse 1 and ended with verse 11 and 14. We do what is right because of what Christ has done for us. And it plays out. Older men, older women, younger men, and workers. And here's what we can do. Here's how we can be determined, disciplined, and dependent. Here's, here's what we can do as we, as we get ready to this is important. It's protecting the reputation of the truth. When we're determined to endure through whatever situation it is, when we're older and we've seen it all and we've done it all, and we still have joy that comes out of us, I've met the opposite. And I think you've had 60 years to get to know who Jesus is and how he gives you strength. And I'm not saying you can't have a bad day. I'm just saying, what's the consistency? But it makes a big difference. Because if I encounter somebody who told me, I've had 60 years to get to know Jesus, and I hate life, then they're maligning the Word of God. But when I meet somebody like Wayne who says, how far do you want me to go? Then I know what has happened in his life is true. Wayne has bad days. He can't get up and go like this. But consistently, he reveals joy so that no one will align the word of God. 
and the women teaching the younger women, we're going to get into that in just a second. The young men being disciplined, here's what it looks like, because we're protecting the church. The young men are self-controlled in what they say and what they do, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed, because they have nothing bad to say about us. And the workers, the reason we go to work and we do the best we can because of what Christ has done for us is because we want to make Jesus attractive. Being dependable shows up like this. We're dependable so that in every way that we make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. There's a change that happens in us and other people want it. They want to know who Jesus is. So here's what it looks like as we go out. Here's what it looks like as we go out. Older men, if you haven't been, if you haven't been living this way, here's what we got to do. You have to make the truth stand out in your life because of your endurance, because of knowing the Bible, because of living that lifestyle for decades. You've got to make that truth stand out that God has made a difference in your life. And, and older women, you've got to find younger women to help train your teachers. If you're not on the lookout, you ladies who have been there and done that, you've lived your life, you've raised your children, you've helped raise your grandchildren, you have seen what it takes to know Jesus in the life, you've got to be on the lookout for younger women to offer your love to, to offer an example to, to show that it's okay if your son gets sick in the middle of the night, my wife or any lady needs to call older woman for advice. Because not everybody has a good mom. Not everybody has a good mother-in-law to turn to. You younger women, if nobody approaches you, seek them out. We are a church body full of dedicated, determined believers in the faith that are so willing to show you what it means. Check it out. Younger women need to be trained, this scripture says, to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and be subject to their husbands, so that no one will align the word of God. Ask a woman of faith, an older woman of faith, what does that mean, submissive to my husband? How does that play out? Because I know the Bible says it, but I don't want to do it in the wrong way. Turn over to Proverbs 31 and check out what God says is an ideal woman and then go find that woman in our church and say, help me be a godly woman. Proverbs 31 shows it out. And it's not, a, it's not some doormat woman either. It's a strong woman of faith that takes care of her service, that takes care of her house, that runs a business. And we have older women that can train younger women to do Good because of what Christ has done in the world. And young men, go out and protect the reputation of this body of believers and all the other churches in Wilmington by how you say things and how you act. This is a call, not because we're trying to impress people, but because we're trying to protect the reputation of Jesus. We're trying to protect the reputation of the church. I keep running into people who say, I'll never set foot in the church again. I'll never go in there again. I'll never listen to another sermon. I'll never do another Bible study because I've been hurt so bad. And it's the interaction that you're going to have with them that's going to show them that not all Christians are going to be hurtful all the time. We're just going to hurt people some of the time. Because we're people. But the younger men have this job to do, this responsibility to be self-controlled and be an example with integrity. And finally, we're going to be dependable. No matter whatever we do, we're going to make Jesus look good because whatever we're doing, we're doing to make him look good. Whether we're at work, whether we're at play, whether we're in church, whether we're in classes, whether we're at a tailgate party. This is how we're going to live out what God says is being good. We're good because of what Christ did for us, 
But now we can be good because of 